Hello, I'm Umberta Genta and welcome to another episode of Intondo's podcast, the podcast that puts vintage design stories back into circulation. Our guests are vintage lovers and they're asked to pick their favorite interiors from anywhere in the world. They describe the place, subjects, and decoration, they tell us why these have an important meaning in their life or in their work. Today, I'm really pleased to welcome Richarda Barbieri, fiction editor at Feltrinelli, and passionate about international and Italian literature. Welcome, Richarda. Hello, hello, Umberta. Hello, Intondo. To begin with, can you tell us about the aspects the job of a fiction editor involves? Yeah. So the main part of the, of the job of a fiction editor consists in scouting from all over the world. I cover both Italian and foreign fiction, as you said, and looking for the best fiction, the best possible fiction. So it consists in reading a lot, being in touch with literary scouts, foreign publishers, literary agents and writers and selecting what can fit in the list of the publishing house and create the catalog. So the first part consists in scouting, reading and reading and reading and being very, very selective and um, and getting to know whatever literature from all over the world has to offer. And from that on, after selecting what can fit on the list, we acquire the book and start working in order to take it to take it to the bookshops. So uh, an editor edits, so uh, works with the author in order to uh, perhaps suggest which are the possible ways to adjust it, and uh, edits and reviews and creates the proofs selects with the author the cover, the title, sometimes it can be a working title and then it can change through the process and uh, uh, create the book, the object of the book. And then be the best advocate to the author in the publishing house and from the publishing house to the booksellers and then to the readers in order to bring the book and the author's message to the reader and to the world. The world of literature and interiors often seem to mix and their match remains a very successful reading topic. How does this relationship between books and homes affect you? Well, I think that the first way uh, that I got in touch with interior was through books. In my whole life, I uh, imagined a whole bunch of beautiful houses like as I read Little Women, as I read uh, Growing Up, Wuthering Heights, uh, Jane Austen, my whole imaginary is shaped through books and if you think about for instance of Little Women it's all it's all set in these two houses like the Lawrence family and the March family <clears throat> and, uh, and you really, really, really can imagine uh, how they were. And through that, I developed my own literary taste. But also, I think most of my uh, taste in terms of, of interior was shaped through books. And of course, through travels, through exploration. Um, but a big part of that came, came from books. Um, and also, uh, my... My imaginary uh, is is shaped. I'm thinking, for instance, of um, I'm thinking of Virginia Woolf and uh, a room of uh, a room of one's own, for instance. So uh, it's all about having a creative space and and as she said, having the means and uh, to have a, a a place for for oneself. As you know, Intondo loves to bring back to life stories about interiors and objects. This is why we propose to our guests to share the memory of a place, which is particularly important to them. And today we spoke about books and reading spots. So do you have a favorite reading spot? I do. I have many. 
uh, because of my job, I think. Whenever I enter a house or a building, the first thing that I check are books and bookshelves. Mm -hmm. And I do think that a bookshelf tells a lot about its owner. So it can be about, you can tell about yourself through the books that you choose, through the ways that you arrange the books, through the, through the choice of the bookshelf in itself. So whenever I enter a house, I always, always look for the bookshelf and have a look. And I have many favorite reading spots. I also like to travel a lot. And whenever I travel, I end up visiting many bookshops, for instance. So most of them are, are, there are some of them that are really famous, like if you think in Paris, Shakespeare and Company, where you can actually live. So you can actually live within the bookshop by certain mm -hmm. things. And if you think in Venezia, for instance, the Libreria Acqua, Acqua Alta, and, uh, and, and one of my favorite reading spots and bookshops is in London, and it's called Persephone Books. And it's both a publishing house and a bookshop. Actually, it used to be in London, and it just moved to Bath. And whenever I visited London, I would go there. So if you think about it, it, is, it used to be in Bloomsbury, and Bloomsbury in itself is the area of London where there was the Bloomsbury Group. So think of Virginia Woolf, Foster, uh, Virginia's sister, um, by Isabel, Haynes, so a whole very artistic literature uh, group. And uh, so the, the era in itself tells a lot. Think about this tiny street called Lamb Conduit Street, and there is this tiny bookshop. Uh, it's all painted in grey, which is the same colour as all of the books published by Persephone Books. And the first time I visited it, there was a bicycle in front of it, in front of it. And, um, and then there was a tiny straw basket with the catalog of, uh, of, the, of the Persephone books. And then as you enter, it's like stepping back into another word, uh, into the word, a vintage word, the word of the reads that I was telling you about that I grew up with. And um, the idea of Persephone, starting from the name Persephone, is to bring back to life a uh, lost or forgotten or out of print books from the mid 20th century and mostly for, yeah, I would say like 90% of it written by women. And the books, the books are artistic objects in, in, in themselves, I think. So they all have a gray cover, the same, the same color, this Persephone gray, they call it, of the bookshop. And, uh, and inside, they always choose a, a specific end paper, uh, selecting it from all the vintage um, uh, clothes uh, or paintings, liberties and um, and each book has a book sign also that tells you a tiny history of the book and of the end, end paper and why it was chosen for that um, so it is indeed a, an artistic uh, object in itself the book and uh, the bookshop as you enter has uh, a big arm, arm used to have as i said it is now in bath and I should visit as soon as possible, but has a, a bookshelf made of wood and a very cozy armchair. And every now and then, um, they, there are always flowers. So think about daffodils, think about uh, tulips. Mm. And every now and then, uh, there are geese from the readers from the area. So you can imagine like a lemon cake, the typical British uh, quintessential taste, I think, in a way. And, uh, um, and it's a place that's for me, is very inspirational. 
I like to think that books, the good books, always find a way to get to readers. And, uh, and I like very much the idea of having a place where you can discover gems from the past that went out of print or were forgotten or didn't get to the attention of the public. Uh, but they have a, a second screen, as uh, Persephone books, uh, as the name suggests. Thank you so much, Ricciarda. Today we've listened to Ricciarda Barbieri, fiction editor of Feltrinelli. My name is Umberta Genta, and this is the Intondos podcast. Thank you for listening to today's episode. For more vintage design stories, don't miss our next podcast or visit intondo.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.